Good morning, I'm Professor Paul Specht. And I'm Professor Alex Birdwell, and we'll be introducing the isometric sketching module. I'm going to start with uh, using the truck body of the little truck model that you saw in the introduction. Uh, I want to introduce you and emphasize the keys to isometric drawing. They're very simple, they're very straightforward, they're absolutely essential. First thing that Professor Specht is going to do is draw a horizontal line at the bottom of his paper space. And you'll need to draw a vertical line off center. Next, you'll be drawing two uh, axes at 30 degrees. These will be your X and Y axes. It's important that they are at 30 degrees, approximately. The vertical will be your Z axis. All right. Next, you'll be marking off and defining your scale. Isometric means same length scale. So if these are inches, these are miles, these are centimeters, it doesn't matter. But as long as you choose your unit that you'll be using, they will be the same on each axis. That's what's important to maintain here. So on the X, Y, and Z, your units will be the same length on each one. So we're going to be marking off for this truck that is three inches tall, six inches long, and two and a half inches wide. Professor Specht here has marked off six units deep, three inches, uh, three units uh, wide, and three units tall. All right. Next thing he's going to be marking off here is the bounding plane for the bottom footprint of our truck, which he's just done here. So this is in the XY plane. Be sure that uh, your lines are constantly parallel. This is parallel to a main reference. This is parallel to the main reference. Likewise for any vertical that you make. Right. This will be true of the isometric drawing. This is true of your orthographic multi-view. This is true of oblique. Parallel lines always need to be parallel to other lines. Uh, vertical lines are always parallel to pa vertical lines, etc. Right. Even though we are freehanding, this remains true. All right. Next thing, you're going to be dropping your vertical lines at each of the corners of the footprint and then connecting the top plane, parallel lines to the y-axis, parallel lines to the x-axis. This will define your bounding box that will completely and perfectly enclose the truck body. Right? So you now see the bounding box. As Professor Specht holds the truck directly above the sketch, you will see that it fits perfectly within the bounding box. Now we're going to start with that first front edge that he's just marked off. And this first front edge is one and three quarters inch tall. So these are our units. He's marking off that edge. Draws a parallel line to the x-axis. And this is the front edge of the hood. It now marks off the front plane of our truck. All right. You now that is marked off. Now I'm going to mark off the top edge of uh, the roof of the truck. That's three and a half inches long from the back of the truck. Marks that off. Everything is measured and dimensioned. You don't guess the features, right? You don't guess where their locations are. Measure them, mark them off, and place them. So he's marked that off, marked off the edge, drawn a parallel line to the x-axis. That's been done, right? <clears throat> Next, we're marking off the location of the bottom of the windshield. <clears throat> That is one and a quarter inch from the front plane of our bounding box. And it is one and three quarters inch uh, or units from the bottom plane of our bounding box. So we place that location, draws a parallel line to the x axis. That defines the bottom edge of the windshield. Connect those diagonal lines up to the top edge of the windshield. He now has the outside edges of our truck. So you can see. He's marking those in dark lines. We have the windshield plane, the front fit plane of the truck, the top hood plane, the top plane of the truck, and the side planes of the truck. Professor Specht is now going to mark off our headlights. They are a half inch in diameter. They are also a half inch from the top edge of the um, hood, and also a half inch in from the sides of the truck so he's marked off those uh, locations. Again, don't guess the locations. Mark them off, measure the dimensions, and place the features. Don't guess them. 
He's drawing a bounding square for drawing the circle. We'll go over how to draw those in the review after this video. So after drawing that, he's sketching out his isometric circle, as he's doing now, to define the headlight. You would do the exact same process for the second headlight, which is the same size, location is a half inch down from the top edge and a half inch in from the other edge of the uh, right hand side of the uh, truck edge. Next we're going to be placing the wheel well. Professor Speck, is that what you're placing next? I believe so. Oh, he's working on the truck axle here. So we're placing the truck axle, which is a half inch uh, up from the <clears throat> bottom edge of the truck. So he's marked off a reference line a half inch or half unit up from the bottom. It is also one and a half units uh, from the front edge. So he's marked that. He's drawing a half isometric circle here. So we have half a bounding square that he's drawn. He's drawn the diagonals. Again, we'll go over that in the review after this video. He's drawing a semicircle here. He's marked off his tangent points, drawn the circle. The bottom of each end of the semicircle, he's got two vertical lines. So it defines the bottom of the wheel well. The wheel well has a half inch depth, so we're going to have to draw in in parallel to the x axis a half inch of depth. So he marks that location. Again, it has a half inch vertical line coming up, and then you'll repeat the uh, semicircle process coming up. Not all of that is visible. So the first part that is visible through the front plane of the wheel well, he draws dark. The rest of that semicircle is invisible. It's behind the front wheel well. So that is not drawn. And then you'll finish off the back side of the wheel well by drawing in that uh, line parallel to the y-axis that he's done there. The process for the rear wheel well is the exact same, but the location is uh, one and a half inches from the back plane of the truck. Last, we're going to draw the driver's window. Professor Speck, can you give us the dimension location for that window? The location for that window is a one inch diameter window. It's approximately one inch down. One inch diameter. Yeah, one and a half inches, no, two, I'm guessing. That's good, it's okay, close. The process for drawing it is the same as we've shown. You draw your bounding square, <coughs> draw your diagonals, and then mark off your tangents for the points touching the, uh, the bounding square. Draw your isometric circle. It has a half inch of depth. <coughs> Repeat the process for the inner plane of that circle, or inner plane of that window. Repeat the process for an isometric circle. Only part of that inner plane will be visible. Inner circle will be visible. So you draw that nice and bold. The rest of that circle is not visible, so it's not drawn. We want to emphasize that uh, every feature you put on a, an object is also constructed in exactly the same way you construct the overall large character. You can see how we did that with the truck. Uh, so finally, let me just uh, do a, 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 a fast review. Here we go. Okay, there's the footprint, there's the boundary box, four verticals, here's the height. Okay, now you can see I'm drawing this pretty, pretty loosely, but nonetheless, what it does is to preserve the proportions. I could do the truck again uh, very quickly if I had to. Uh, You can see just how quickly you can make a drawing and why it is important to really understand that 
well, horizontal line, vertical line, 230 degrees become your key references. Every line refers to the X, to the Y, and the Z. Also, we showed you how to construct uh, isometric circles. If you're looking at a true circle, you'd be looking at it straight on. It would look like a circle. However, an isometric plane, you're looking at it at an angle. So this circle looks like an, uh, like an ellipse. To draw this for a true circle, you would start with a square. We we'll call this the bounding square. You'd mark off the midpoints for that square. We know that the circle will touch tangent at those points. Draw a diagonal, two diagonals, right? Mark off 75 to 80% on those diagonals. You have two mid, mid lines, right? Now, draw in your circle. It'll touch at the midpoints. It will also touch roughly at those 75 to 80 percent tick marks that you drew on your diagonals. And there's your true circle. Now the process for drawing an isometric circle is the same. However, your, your bounding square is going to be a rhombus because we have two vertical lines. Mark off our midpoints, draw our diagonals, and then next, draw in your tangent points touching the midpoint, 75 to 80% marks, and draw in your circle. touching the 75 to 80% marks and the midpoint. And here's your isometric circle, which will look more like a true circle, and this one will look more like an ellipse. The process is the same. Okay. It's up to you. Practice makes perfect.